this beautiful day. Mm-hmm. Glad to have good to see Sister Nancy with us this morning. Praise, Praise God. Amen. And praying for her. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good to see you here. Not sick. Amen. Praise the mercy of God. Praise the Lord. If you got some Bibles, turn to the book of Philippians in chapter 4. We're going to begin reading verse 1. Praise the Lord. Philippians chapter 4. Chapter 4, verse 1. I'll read a few scriptures this morning. Amen. Say amen when you get to it. Amen. Man, my fellow, I guess your brain is, is, is programmed to remember stuff when you pair it up with other things. You know, I don't know if that works for me, it works for some people, but a fellow told me how, you, how, uh, how do I find the Philippians? He said, Remember, go eat popcorn. I said, What? He said, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and it's work for me. So anyhow, <laughs> praise the Lord. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, chapter 4, verse 1. If you can, stand for the reading of God's word this morning. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> the Bible says, Therefore, my brethren, dearly, Beloved and long for my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech you, Iodius, and by I beseech Syntyche, that they be of the same mind and in the Lord. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with lament also with other my fellow laborers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your many blessings. I thank you for the spirit that's been felt in this place already, Lord God. I pray this morning, Lord God, that you would touch the hearts and souls represented under the sound of my voice. Lord, that you till that soil up so the seed, which is the word of God, would land on good ground and bring forth much fruit, Lord Jesus. Let us get in and worship you continually in this service, Lord God, and meet with us in the altars and do what only you can do. I pray for these lips of clay that you anoint them, Lord God, and give me the power and the unction of the Holy Ghost to preach this message that you've laid on my heart, Lord God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you bind up the spirit of hell that may come against this service and loose encouragement in this house. Lord God, deliverance, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. And we thank you for the finished work on Calvary. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated in the house of God. Praise the Lord. I've been kind of studying on this matter and and thinking on it all week and Lord just kind of dealt with me on going here. He spoke to something I may preach tonight, but you know, we need to just always obey the Lord and, and stick with what He's got because He knows what we need to hear before we even ask. Praise the Lord. Amen. But you know, here in our text, and Paul's uh, writing this letter, letter to Philippi, and he's encouraging people to do the work of the Lord. Amen. He tells them in the first part of the script, the text that we read, he said he wants them to be on the same mind. Amen. He wants us to be on the same mind and the same accord. And I know that different signs and different denominations, and they want to bring in this and they want to bring in that. But Paul tells us that we need to be on the same mind. Amen. And we can't do anything where division is. Can you agree with me this morning? Amen. Any kind of division that's brought in the body of Christ is just a crack where the devil can slip in and demolish what the Lord is trying to do. Amen? So we got to be on one mind and one accord, praise God, and not let division slip, slip in. He was talking about Jesus in the gospel, was talking about a uh, house divided cannot stand. Amen? I heard a preacher say one time, if you look throughout the world and all the evil and all the crooked things that's in the world, you'll never find evil fighting against evil, amen, because they want to come together and destroy even what God's trying to do. It doesn't matter if they agree with each other or they don't. Evil's always going to side with evil. Come on, somebody. And I, I think it's high time that the church do the same thing. There's things that's outside of this box right here. 
that we think is right, and we think is this, and we think is that. But inside of that box is the blood of Jesus, amen? And if we could all come together and agree that that's the only thing that's going to get you to heaven is the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And the grace of God is the only thing that's going to transform you into who you're called to be, amen? And forget everything else and come together and be on one mind and on one accord. The devil and every, every one of his demons would not stand a chance against the living church today. Can somebody say amen to me this morning? He goes on to say to tell them to assist the women and all the fellow, fellow laborers whose names are written in the book of life. Amen. He's trying to tell us that we need to be a part of the body of Christ. Amen. We need to be working. We need to be doing something, assisting somebody or, or whatever the case may be, whatever God has called you to do on this planet before you await your heavenly home. We need to be about the Father's business. Say amen to me this morning. Amen. Then he goes on to say, Rejoice in the Lord always. I, again, I say rejoice. Amen. And he's trying to let us know that when we do this for the Lord, we need to have a good attitude about it. We need to have joy in our soul about it. Come on, hear me this morning. We don't need to walk out with a scowl on our face trying to do something for God. Amen. And discourage somebody. Can you hear me this morning? He said rejoice always. Amen. Again, I say rejoice. And y'all know what I'm talking about. If you ever go down to the tag place, come on somebody. Or you ever go to bail somebody out of jail. Amen. You meet these people that have these jobs that deal with different folks continually. Come on somebody. You know the folks down at the tag office deal with some folks because they're sitting there waiting all day long and when they finally get up there and you tell them that they got to have another piece of paper that they didn't have. So not how long have they waited there all day? they got to come back. Come on now. So I imagine they get a few people with some attitudes and that's why they are the way they are down there. But Paul is telling us if we're going to serve in the body of Christ, we're going to come against, come, come, up, come up on some people with some different attitudes. We're going to have to deal with some folks that's in different walks of life. Amen. We're going to come up in some situations that we ain't going to like to deal with. But he said, even in the those situations rejoice again. I say rejoice. Amen. Even when you're trying to deal with somebody that isn't that much lovable. Amen. Even when you're trying to deal with somebody that you can't stand being around, that arises your flesh. He said rejoice again. I say rejoice. Amen. We're going to deal with folks that we don't want to deal with. We're going to have to do things for folks that we really don't want to do things for folks. Amen. Take example. If you go over there the day that, that the women do the doctor giveaway, and you're going to come in contact with some people that take advantage of the system. And you know that they're taking advantage of the system. And you've got to deal with those folks with a smile on your face to get to the ones that really need the help that we're trying to provide. Can you say amen? amen. So you've got to rejoice again. I say rejoice to deal and deal with these certain situations. And I mean, it's no different than anything else. You're going to go and witness and minister to some people that's just going to have a frown on their face. They're going to have their own opinion, even though they never read one page out of the Word of God about who God is. And you're going to have to deal with that to do the work that God has set before you. Amen. Amen. Come on now. Praise the Lord. But he says in verse 3, Amen. Paul tells us, he says, I entreat also true yoke fellow, a true yoke fellow. And this is really where God began to deal with my heart. And, and that's what I want to really preach to you today is about being a true yoke fellow. Amen. It's about being that person that Paul is trying to describe and dealing with all the things that you're going to have to deal with to be that person.
person. Amen. You're going to have to deal with all types of walks of life and, 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 and everything that goes along with it. And that's where I want to go with it today. And you may say, well, what is a yoke fellow, preacher? And I, you know, I had to kind of look it up myself. Amen. I kind of had an idea of what it was. But a yoke fellow is someone who shares the burden and helps in ministry. Someone who shares the burden and helps in ministry. Not somebody that just comes to church to be seen. Not somebody that's just out there, to, you know, calling themselves a Christian and living their life however they see fit and doing what they want to do. But somebody with the burden for somebody to be saved and helps in the ministry is what a yoke fellow is. Can you hear me this morning? Praise God. It is a vital role that every Christian needs to strive each and every day of their life to walk in. Can you hear me? Amen. He did not call you. He did not save you to come sit on a pew every Sunday at church. Amen. He did not call you to do that and waste time. Amen. He called you to encourage believers and lead the lost to Jesus. He didn't call you just to come and sit on this pew and wait on heaven. Amen. That's our reward. Amen. That's the end result. It's been an eternity with Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what we're got. we have a waiting on us. But he did not save you to wait and do nothing until that time gets here. He saved you to encourage others to keep going that extra mile for Jesus. And he saved you to lead the lost to Jesus. Amen. He saved you to do a work for him. Amen. To glorify his name. That's why he saved you. Praise God. I read a thing on Facebook the other day, and it, and it was a prophecy that, that David Wilkerson made when I, uh, here some years back. And he prophesied that the church would turn their focus off of leading the lost to Jesus and turn it more onto comforting and encouraging the saints. And if you look around, that's exactly where we are right now. Amen. You go around to all these mainstream denominations and everything, all, all these other, you know, and even the independent churches and everything, all the churches, they spend thousands upon thousands of dollars each and every year to encourage a saint of God to keep going. And there's nothing wrong with that. We have revivals here a couple of times a year. We'll get a preacher and he'll come and, and we'll have revival and I believe that we need that. It revives our spirit to keep going the extra mile. But somewhere along the way we took our focus completely off leading the lost to Jesus and focused on telling people that they need to come to church. When you already know that you need to be in God's house. You already know what you need to do because you've been saved long enough that you've read his word. And said, now all of a sudden we think that that's all that we have to do. Come on. Can we be honest with one another? And I've fallen short, especially in this. How long has it been since you encouraged a lost person to get saved? When's the last time you witnessed to somebody and asked them, have you ever thought about getting saved? Have, when's the last time that God's nudged you in the dollar store at Walmart to a total stranger and said, go up to that person, ask them about getting saved, and you said, no, I don't believe so, Lord. I'm going to just go to a church on Sunday, and I'm going to tell my fellow brother and my sister to keep going that extra mile. I mean, we took our vision completely off of enlarging the church and took and put it on stabilizing the church. Amen. Y'all ain't going to hear me this morning, huh? My, my, my. Billy Graham said that every day of his life, he invited, he, he gave an invitation to somebody. Man, how, how, how far have we fallen? from that. <laughs> Every day of his life he wouldn't let a day pass without asking somebody if they wanted to get saved. Praise the Lord. We as a church, we have a job to do. 
Amen. And it's not just the preacher's job to do it or the preacher's wife's job to do it or, or the deacon's job to do it. It's each and every person that is a saved child of God has a job to do. And that job you do is going to help somebody else do their job as well. Amen. When you do your job, then somebody else is able to do their job and it just works like a machine is supposed to. It works like the body of Christ is supposed to. Amen. If the hand is over here trying to do the foot's work, guess what? It ain't doing it properly and now all of a sudden the hand ain't doing what the hand's supposed to do because the hand's trying to do the foot's job. If the mouse over here trying to do the, the nose's job and then and, and, and the mouse not designed to do the nose's job but it's trying to anyhow, now all of a sudden the body's not cooperating or operating like it's supposed to operate because it's trying to do something it's not called or qualified to do. Amen. Come on, somebody. And now it's trying to do two things when it shouldn't be all only be doing one. And it can't do the job it's supposed to do like it's supposed to do it. Amen. Come on, hear me this morning. Praise the Lord. I, I was looking up of uh, these, these tandem teams, these horses, they pull these draft horses and stuff. And, and a six-horse hitch team has different positions. All of them have different positions. But I was really kind of focusing on this. And the six-team hitch has a lead. And there's two of them, which I thought was pretty... Pretty cool because Jesus said he sends us out two by two. Amen. Hey, praise the Lord. Amen. But there's a lead, there's a swing, and there's a wheel horse. Amen. And every one of these horses have something that they're sp supposed to do. And if one doesn't do their job properly, then the other horse has to carry the load that they're supposed to carry. And they can't pull the load like it's supposed to be pulled. Can you say amen? It's, 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 a, it's a team thing. It's, a team. it's all about teamwork. Amen. And if one's not pulling, then the other one's having to compensate for what this one's supposed to be doing. And it's not operating the way it's supposed to operate. And I know that if somebody wants to slack and be lazy and think that it's just spiritually, then God's going to find somebody else to fill that position. But until he does, the other person right next to him have to carry their weight that they're supposed to carry. Amen. And the load is not being carried or pulled the way it's supposed to be pulled. Amen. We have a job to do. There was something that God designed you to do. And I say it a million times every time I get up here and preach that you were called to do something before you were ever entered into your mother's womb. Before the foundations of the world you were designed to do a specific thing. And nobody can do it like God designed you quite how to can do it exactly how God designed you to do it. Amen. Now I know some of it's qualified in the same, but they can't do it. They can't reach the people that God has for you to reach. Amen. They're not supposed to be in the positions that you're supposed to be. Can you hear me this morning? There is a unique thing that you're supposed to do, but if everything else is more important than what God designed you to do, you're not pulling the load. You're not being the yoke fellow that you're called to be. Can you hear me this morning? God's got a plan for your life, but it's up to each and every one of us to put that number one on our list and let everything be second. Come on, somebody. Amen. And when we do that, when we want to be the Christian that we're called to be, our family will be just how it's supposed to be. Amen. When we want to be the Christian that God has called us to be, our jobs are going to go just like they're supposed to go. Amen. Because your priorities are put in line the way they need to be put. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, you know, the most, when I, when I read this, it, it kind of intrigued me, but the most important part of this, this horse team is the wheel horses. Now, the wheel horse probably has the worst view out of all six of them. Because he's got four horses behind in front of him. He's got the worst view 
And the Bible and, 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 and the article that I read said that he does the most work because they always put the stronger horses in the back. Amen. The bigger and stronger horses because that wheel horse is the horse that slows the wagon down when it's going down a hill and it, it picks up the speed and encourages the other horses to, to do it and it actually does turn the horse as well even though we think that the lead horse is doing all this work it's actually the one that's not getting that much attention and I'm trying to tell you right now amen when you're doing what you're supposed to do for God it ain't because you're trying to get the most attention you, you know, it's not going to be about who's going to notice you the most. They may not even notice anything that you're doing. Amen. And I'm telling you right now, that's when you know that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing for God. When you're not focused on all the attaboys and the pats on the back that come from everybody else. All you're worried about is being the yoke fellow that you're called to do and doing what you want to do. Doing what you're supposed to do for God because all you want to do is please God. Glory to God. It's not, how, it's not about how much I can be seen or how much I can be noticed. It's about your willingness to do your part in the body of Christ. Amen. Glory to God. To help your team. Amen. Amen. We're supposed to be on the same team, right? We're supposed to be on the same team and we're supposed to do whatever it takes and, and this is that and the other. But, but now we've, we've fallen in this place for the church. And I, I'm telling you right now, uh, COVID-19 made the church lazy. Because now they think that they can sit at home and watch something on the internet instead of making the sacrifices it takes to come to God's house, get up, get ready, come on down here, make that drive. And, and they made the church lay. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with watching a minister preach online because I watch messages all the time on my phone. But when Sunday comes around, we need to do whatever it takes to get to God's house. I'm saying if you sit, stay at home. But if you just being lazy, you need to get fired up about God, make the sacrifices it takes to get here, and be the yoke fellow that you're called to be. Come on, somebody, because it's a team. What you do, what I do, is going to make you do your job better. And it's vice versa. What you do is going to make me do my job better. And I'm just throwing this out here. And this is just an illustration on a small scale compared to what I'm talking about. But every church service hinges on if I do my job correctly, if you do, do your job cor correctly, if you do your job, it hinges on that very thing. I'm supposed to come and obey God, I'm supposed to have the message of the hour. Amen. I'm not supposed to look on the internet and look at some illustrated book or anything like that. I'm supposed to get in my prayer closet and pray until I get the message that God wants me to preach. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. It's your job to show up and worship God. It's your job to come, amen, and as I've made mention already, if you've got something in your heart that's hindering, it's your job to come on up here, get rid of it, so we can move past all that, we can get in and we can have church, amen. It's your job just as much as it is mine to obey the Lord in every service, amen. Come on, somebody, Sister Lisa, if she feels led by the Holy Ghost to step out in that aisle and worship God, then I'm going to tell you how it works, amen. Again, it's contagious because another one will start doing it. And then another one will obey God. And then for you know, Brother Danny's coming up here worshiping the Lord. And Brother Marshall's stepping out. And pandemonium sitting in. And people's getting truly saved. I'm not talking about professing they are saved and going back out there and living like hell. They've had a desire birthed in their hearts to walk according to the Word of God and live like God's called us to do. Come on, somebody. There's people getting filled with the Holy Ghost and walking in the power and the authority that God has given us. There's people that's getting delivered from things that has bound them up their whole entire life. But it hinges on what you came to do and what I came to do. It hinges on you being the true yoke fellow Amen. that God has called you to, to be. Man, let's stop depending on everybody else. Let's 
stop waiting on somebody else to obey God. Come on, somebody. Y'all seen it in here before. Every time somebody feels nudged of the Holy Ghost and they step out and obey God, somebody leaves change in this house. Because they said, I'm going to be who I'm supposed to be today. Amen. I'm not going to sit here. Get out of that junk. Man, if the things of this world make us happy, God should make us that much more excited about being here. Now, I know there's denominations that say you ain't got to do that, but I say it all the time. If I go to my mailbox today and there's a million dollar check that's legitimate and it's in my hands and all I got to do is go down there and put it in my bank account, I'm telling you right now, you're going to hear me all the way to loose bell, hollering and shouting and getting down, glory to God, hallelujah Jesus, amen, and I'm telling you right now, if the things of God don't excite us the same way the chances are that we ain't born again, I'm going to say it and say it loud amen, the chances are we need to get in this altar and get saved come on now because he saved you from an eternity in hell he opens your blinded eyes the deception of this world. To think that you had to live to a worldly standard of the white picket fence and the nice little family and all that stuff, you know, that goes along with it that America tries to shove down our throats. God opens your eyes to it. To let you know that the only thing that should be important in your life is to wake up Glorify God wherever you're at. Amen. Man, I'm so thankful that God showed me what I'm supposed to be doing on this planet. Amen. I'm so glad that He showed others what we're supposed to be doing on this planet. Praise God. Because we have a job to do. We have a job to do. There's people that's falling off into hell every day. Amen. The Bible says that the bellies of hell are swelling each and every day. Amen. Because somebody failed to be that young fella. You don't think so? I promise you one thing. There's people that I come in contact with, that I witness to, that if Brother Danny was to come in contact and witness to, they wouldn't listen to nothing he said. But there's also people that Brother Danny comes in contact with that he witnesses to that wouldn't listen to a word that I had to say. Come on, somebody. I'm telling you this morning, we got a job to do. If we want to see the lost saved, we got a job to do. Come on, somebody. We got to be that girl, fella. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We have to work, have to work as a team to get the work of the Lord done. Amen. Every one of you have been to the to the ladies' meeting, the ladies of uh, the diaper giveaway. Amen. And y'all all know uh, the normal crowd, and I say the normal crowd because some of them they they ain't got it registered in their hearts and minds that, that they're called to do more than just sit on a pew. But the normal crowd, if one person doesn't show up. What happens? Then the next person has to bear that load. Yeah. And then that load that that person was supposed to bear, the next person has to step in that and has to do that because one person decided not to show up and do the work of the Lord. Come on, I'm preaching this. I'm preaching to myself. Amen. Same thing with us men. Count. There's one, two, three, four, five, six men in this building right now. Six. We run probably 30 to 40 sometimes, you know, and there's six men in this building right now. we got some young men that we're raising up in the Lord, but there's six in this room right now. If one of the men does not show up, amen, guess what? That load is, 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 is not being carried like it's supposed to. Man, God has trusted us with a ministry where we get to reach out to people that's facing life 
in prison. Amen. They come here. Some of them facing 20 plus years in prison. Amen. And he has trusted us. He has set it up where they can come here and see how men of God are supposed to live. How we're supposed to carry ourselves. But if one person doesn't show up. Come on somebody. The load cannot be carried like it's supposed to be carried. Now, I know y'all know what I'm talking about. When we were working on this building. And one person that didn't show up. Amen. Amen. And guess what? We didn't get as much done as we would have got done if that one person would have showed up. Come on now. It's the same thing when we do the work for the Lord. If that one person doesn't make that commitment and do what God's calling them to do, then we're not going to get done what we need to get done. Praise the Lord. Amen. He's called us to be Christians, yoke fellows. He's called us to be servants. I don't think most, I don't think some of us know what that requires of us. Salvation is free. You can't pay for it. It took Jesus' blood to die on the, to be shed on that tree so you could be saved. But if you're going to serve him, you've got to give up everything. Amen. Everything. It can't be just you floating around just wanting to be a servant when you want to. It has to be your way of life. Amen. It can't be just a season in your life. Uh, January through uh, March, I'm going to serve God and then I'm going to do what I want to do from March to June and then I'm going to pick up in June it can't be like that. It has to be a way of life Amen. to be a young fellow. Right. Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. It takes us all to do God's work. Amen. Amen. Some of you started doing things in this ministry that no longer do them. Some of you started out doing things and have stepped away from it. And I'm telling you, I want to encourage you that we're depending on you just like you're depending on us. Amen. 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 If we want to be if we want to be effective in this community, it's going to take what you was doing, amen, to step back in that, to start doing what you were doing. Come on, somebody, and kind of let that load be transferred back to that person so they can do what they're supposed to do, and you can do what you're supposed to do, and we can be servants of God. Amen. We can be your fellows. Glory to God. Sister, you want to play something? I'm just going to close. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 30, he said, For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. And when you truly are born, born again, it's no longer a job. It's a way of life. 